Hey, everybody, thank you for tuning into Border City Rock Talk, where you get great interviews from great interviewees with sometimes a comedic touch. Today, I've got legendary keyboardist Derek Sherinian, take two. How are you doing, Derek? Doing good, Ernest. Thanks for having me on. Awesome, man. So um, uh, if you've been living in under a snowbank uh, here in Canada or under a rock anywhere else, uh, that's the only reason you shouldn't know of Derek. Uh, uh, Dream Theater and uh, currently as well Sons of Apollo is a super group and Derek's been doing some albums on his own uh, last year or 2020 was the Phoenix and coming out July 1st is the Vortex I've heard a couple tracks off of that album uh, just impressive stuff uh, Derek tell us um, give us a rundown of basically uh, the sound on the Vortex and the writing and uh, who you have as guests on the album Vortex is once again Simon Phillips and I and Simon and I have done five or six records together over the years and we just have a great writing chemistry and playing chemistry together and we really enjoy doing these records so we got together in 2020 to do the Phoenix after nine years of not making solo records and we enjoyed it so much and the response was great. And so we wanted to get back in the studio and, and do, do the Vortex. Mm -hmm. And so we look at it as a continuation of the Phoenix. We kept the same mindset, just the same uh, energy. And we have a few different players on this record. Michael Schenker, Nuno Betancourt, and Mike Stern are first time participants. And I think all of them add great flavor to the sound. Awesome. Um, and not taking away anything out of this interview, Derek, but I'm just going to do a quick plug um, really quick. Um, I couldn't get uh, this interview if I didn't have uh, Chipster and Hadley, which were great. Actually, a buddy of mine, Cody Rogers, helped me today because I didn't have a, a charger for my freaking laptop. You can imagine that. So I'm giving him a shout out. And one more quick thing. I'll get back to you, my friend. Uh, I lost the video for the interview with Doug Aldridge, guys. Shitty, shitty, shitty. But anyways, Doug's on tour with the Dead Daisies. They released Radiance. And Doug sent me a couple guitar licks. And I'm going to put those up uh, uh, somewhere at the end of this. But this interview is all about Derek. So um, how did you come up with the term, the Vortex? Once again, it's always very difficult writing song titles or album titles for instrumental music because there's no lyrics to choose from. So just in the end, uh, we were throwing around a couple ideas and Vortex was the, the, the best sounding one. Yeah, yeah. So we went with that. So because I found out after the fact, after it was too late, that Neil Sean had a solo album called Vortex in, in 2015. I didn't know. Well, I mean, the, the word is, uh, um, it's, it's not like um, the most uncommon word, right? No, I know. But still, if I would have known he would have named it that, I would have named it something else. But that's cool. No, well, so, but Vortex good. is, I think it's my best album. I know that's, every artist says that. But we really, I really pushed myself hard on this, especially on the song Scorpion. Yeah. The piano playing, that's my most difficult playing I've ever been recorded on or ever had to play. So, I feel very proud of that. And just overall, the the songwriting and the producing and choice of, of keyboard sounds, everything is better than it's ever been. So I'm very pleased. Well, I, I get to tell people, I, I listened to a couple of the cuts off the album and um, yeah, I should have known, not lyrically. I mean, it's, that's just a standard question. I mean, sorry about that. But the Scorpion, it has a jazz blues flavor to it, in my opinion. And not just mine, I read probably, I. I think there's like 400 comments out there already on that YouTube video. And a lot of them are talking, they're saying, wow, what a jazz feel, what a blues feel, what a fusion feel. Um, I mean, how did you arrive at that? And um, that is not something of your nature or your natural uh, playing, I'm sure, from, all, from what I've heard. Yeah, well, I've always loved fusion playing. Players like Chick Corea, Russell Ferrante from the Yellow Jackets uh, have inspired me and influenced me. So you can really hear uh, their styles in those in that song in Scorpion. It has that Spanish type vibe to it. And Simon is a big time fusion. He's like the number one jazz fusion drummer in the world. Yeah. And, you know, so I really trust his instincts. And he's played with some heavyweight cats. And he was part of the whole fusion revolution, like in the late 70s, early 80s. I mean, he played on there and back with Jeff Beck. I mean, that's massive. 
Yeah. Um, so. Speaking about, um, you know, playing, wh where did you, did you have a classical or, or not classical per se, but did you have lesson training? Did you play by ear? And if you had training, what was your, um, what was your style growing up? That, that I, I, have, I have different kinds of schooling. I had private lessons as a kid and then I went to Berkeley College of Music when I was 16, I took my uh, GED after my my uh, junior year of high school and skipped my senior year and went right to Berkeley. Hmm. And then I took private lessons at Berkeley. And then when I moved to LA, I studied with some great teachers, Russell Ferrante, who I mentioned earlier from Yellow Jackets, and then another cat named Mitchell Foreman, who's an hmm. amazing jazz piano player. And so I have that in my roots, but it's kind of been tucked away for like the last 30 years or so. Just I could pull it out little pieces at a time on these records, but now I'm really just pulling it out full out and I'm going to play, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm going to be playing straight piano. So, but what I meant, uh, and I should have been more clear, influence wise, uh, who influenced you growing up and uh, brought you to where you are? I mean, different influences, like as I said, Chick Corea, Al Di Miola, uh, but I loved rock too, like Van Halen, Aerosmith, Led Zeppelin, Ozzy, you know, bands like that. Yeah. So I always wanted to kind of fuse the two together, have the energy of the hard rock, but have the intricacy and the harmony of, of fusion. Yeah, well, for sure. Well, I mean, like you bring up hard rock. I mean, that's kind of what you're known for. And yeah, definitely Eddie with uh, Jump. Um, and then you've got um, the Blizzard of Oz. You've got the beginning, you know, the keyboards with um, Mr. Crowley and things like that. So definitely. So um, are you doing any shows uh, privately to promote this album or, um, or no? Yes, we're doing uh, three shows. Two shows are going to be um, Simon and I with Ron Bumblefoot on guitar mm -hmm. and Rick Fierabracci on bass. And then one show is gonna be the piano trio format, which I mentioned with no guitars. And uh, the two shows with Ron will be in Ventura, California, August 29th at okay. The Grape. And then we're playing a festival in Armenia called Starmus, which I'm very excited about. And on September 4th will be the piano trio with Simon. And then on September 6th will be the quartet with Ron. Okay. And then we're going to book some more stuff after that. We're just, it's in the works. Right. So any, what else are you doing? Doing anything else right now? I'm writing. I'm every day. I'm in the studio writing for my, uh, my next album, my, my piano album, which I need to finish by the end of the year. So I definitely have my work cut out and I'm just doing press for the vortex. I'm doing a bunch of interviews every day. Yeah. Well, that's what, uh, that's what Hadley said for sure that you're just a busy guy Monday to Friday. Um, since this is going out to the Canadian audi audience primarily, although I have a lot of American uh, subscribers, um, who would you say that's uh, one of your favorite Canadian artists or bands, past or present? I don't know, but my favorite Canadian is my son Dylan, who lives in uh, in Toronto area, and I love him very much. So, Dylan, if you're listening to this. Yo. Oh, okay. Dylan, Dylan Sherinian? Yes. Okay, I'll get you to send Hadley a link, so I'll send him a link, so he'll uh, definitely watch this for sure. Um, right, cool. So, are you doing any shows uh, anytime in the future with Sons up in Canada? Uh, no, there's no, there's no uh, shows yeah. booked with Sons. We're doing South America, some makeup yeah. shows from the COVID era, right. but there's no um, other plans from there. Okay. Well, yeah. we hope to see you up here, Derek. It's been a pleasure. Oh, before I let you go, what's the opposite of unsubscribe? Subscribe. Yes, do as Derek Sherinian says and subscribe to this channel so you get these great interviews. I'd like to thank you uh, for your patience, man. And um, anything to say to your Canadian fans? Uh, oh, uh, where can they uh, get the album on July 1st? Where's the link? Oh, you can go on Amazon or on uh, Inside Out website. It'll be there, or you can uh, you can buy direct. I think from my shop too. So probably go to me. That's the best. Go to DerekTurnian.com. All right, we'll do that. 
It's been a pleasure once again, Derek, and thank you so much for your patience. Thanks so much, Ernest. I'll talk to you later. I appreciate you having me on. <laughs>